The role of anti-thymocyte globulin in transplantation has been one that has been debated for more than a decade and a half. <clears throat> there have been randomized trials that show that, you know, ATG, particularly in the context of unrelated donor transplantation, is associated with a lower risk of graft-versus-host disease, although no benefit in overall survival or disease-free survival. One of the problems with anti-thymocyte globulin is that it is an antibody and that it's not like a regular drug where you know actually how much you're giving and that if different patients may have different levels of exposures depending on their age, their weight, and more importantly, on their lymphocyte count. Dr. Jean-Jacques Bolens, who currently is the head of pediatrics, has been a pioneer in the area of personalized precision dosing of ATG. And he has shown that patients who are underexposed can get higher risk of graft-versus-host disease or rejection. And patients who are overexposed in the sense that there is still a lot of ATG hanging around after the donor cells come in can have a high risk of slow immune reconstitution and infection. This has been done primarily in the setting of a unmanipulated graft. At Memorial, we pioneered the use of CD34 selected grafts or CD34 purified grafts, which is a form of ex vivo T cell depletion. Mike Scordo recently reported using the methods that JJ Boland's done that, as with unmanipulated grafts, we have a 20% of our patients are overexposed to ATG. These patients have very slow CD4 recovery, are at a two to three fold increased risk of non relapse mortality, primarily due to infectious complications. We've now capped ATG at a specific dose, and our next generation of studies, which will be starting now, actually look at trying to precisely dose ATG so that we will give every patient the optimal exposure and be able to improve their outcomes coming the years ahead.